Welcome to the Quality Improvement Basics course, Change Management Basics module. The topics for this module will condense the broad topic of change management by covering the following key aspects of this field of study. First, we will define change management. We will then cover how to anticipate and foster culture change. And then we'll appreciate the impact of change on individuals. Quality improvement is a path through change, adapting to new ways of looking at and accomplishing work. You may find that certain change models or approaches presented here will appeal to you and may fit better with your team or organization. I would encourage you to do further reading about the models that spark your interest and at least do some cursory study of those that you may have an initial lukewarm reaction to. They all deal with psychology of individual, team, and organizational change, and each provides practical insights and techniques to use in your QI work. Also, before we start, please open the related documents for this module, tools, templates, and any samples, which are available on the webpage where you found this module link. It will help you to have those ready for quick reference, as screenshots of the documents may not be legible on your screen. Defining Change Management Change management is a broad discipline, but let's narrow it down by starting with a practical definition of what it encompasses. Change management is a structured approach to transitioning individuals, teams, and organizations from a current state to a desired future state. It is an organizational process aimed at empowering employees to accept and embrace changes in their current environment. William Bridges, the author of Managing Transitions, provides a simple insight that is key to understanding the challenge of creating, adapting to, and making change successful within our organizations. Quote, there can be any number of changes, but unless there are transitions, nothing will be different when the dust settles, unquote. Change is a process and a means to get from where we are, our current state, to the desired or future state. The path to achieve the desired change is made up of steps necessary to get there, or as Bridges describes, the transitions. When we implement quality improvement, we need to focus on the process of getting to the desired goal or future state, and change management is a collection of tools that help us navigate that transition process. Factors in change management that can help us achieve our desired goals or pillars that hold up the bridges of transition include leadership commitment. The leadership role is key and there must be commitment for the long haul. There must be a focus on goals and how to get there. The path to these goals is the transition process William Bridges emphasizes. Be attentive to both the technical and the personal aspects of change. There are the mechanics of change that we need to make change happen, but always keep the person or individual as the primary variable in the change equation. Recognize how each person adapts to change and work on making that happen, including for yourself. Again, keep the people aspect of change at the forefront of your work. For example, individuals need information to help understand and navigate their own way through change, and the communication plan is a tool that helps address this need. The last point emphasizes that each person will deal with and adapt to change in a different way. A simple way to think about this is each person having a different path to deal with change, but ultimately making sure our individual paths lead to the same destination as our team or organizational destination. Anticipating and fostering culture change. We'll start talking about culture change, but we need to have a working definition of what culture is. Culture is the values and behaviors that contribute to the unique social and psychological environment of an organization. In other words, it is how we do our work and behave and interact with each other. While quality improvement is not a method to change an entire organization and its culture, a culture or environment that is open and welcoming to change is a key ingredient for successful quality improvement initiatives, as processes will be modified and individuals will be required to work in different ways. It may be challenging to evaluate where your organization lies on the spectrum of openness and adaptability, but understanding the ocean that you are swimming in is very useful. Some key points to consider are most alterations and norms and shared values come at the end of the transformation process. New approaches sink in after success has been proven. Feedback and reinforcement are crucial to buy in. Sometimes the only way to change culture is to change key people. Individuals in leadership positions need to be on board, otherwise the old culture and the old ways will reassert themselves. Change and culture are related, but two unique concepts. Keep in mind that change brings both anticipation and sometimes a sense of nervousness about what is going to happen, along with new opportunities. 
Process, policy, and procedural changes need to be assimilated at several levels where individuals are impacted and asked to alter what may be routine and standard for them. Culture eats strategy for lunch. The idea here is that despite the best laid plans and strategies to make change happen, the culture of our environment will dominate. If your culture is very resistant to change, it is likely that QI efforts will be harder to implement. Think about how your policies, systems, and environment define your culture or readiness and adaptability to change. These are the factors that influence the culture ocean that you swim in. In a 1998 publication entitled Culture at Work in Aviation and Medicine, National, Organizational, and Professional Influences, Helmreich and Merritt examine how culture influences us as individuals, as organizations, and at a national level. At an organizational level, culture reflects shared values, patterns of beliefs, and expectations that guide our collective behavior. It is the basis for how we get things done around here in our workplace. Some organizations get things done by using face-to-face -face communication, more in-person meetings as part of their cultural preference, and other organizations rely more on electronic communication. Each facility or department has its own organizational culture, and you can certainly find variation of culture within these. As an example, the culture in some organizations is very open to change and in fact encourages new learning and testing of changes. In other cultures, there is a slower approach to change, a tendency to let other organizations test new changes and prove them out before they are adopted. Impact of change on individuals. Organizations are made up of people and change is personal. To change as an organization, we first need to have the flexibility and adaptability as individuals to take on and embody the change we seek to implement collectively in our organizations. John Kenneth Galbraith, a Canadian-born economist, public official, and diplomat who wrote bestsellers on economics from the 1950s through the 2000s, poignantly said, quote, Faced with the choice between changing one's mind and proving that there is no need to do so, almost everybody gets busy on the proof, unquote. The idea, of course, is that we default to the status quo and are generally resistant to change. While quality improvement is a discipline that demands change, it's important to validate that resistance and apprehension to change is a normal human phenomenon and something that we need to recognize when promoting change. We are creatures of habit and change can make us feel out of control, uncertain and fearful of losing control over our work and processes, which we are usually quite comfortable with. James Prushka introduced the trans-theoretical model of behavior change in 1983, which is comprised of six stages and is used, coincidentally, in motivational interviewing by clinicians helping patients to own and take self-directed action and do goal setting for themselves. As you listen to these six steps, think about a workplace situation that required you to change and how you would describe your own path or transition through the change at each of these steps. The first three stages of six include one, pre-contemplation, lack of awareness that life or a situation can be improved by a change in behavior. Two, contemplation, recognition of the problem, initial consideration of behavior change, and information gathering about possible solutions and actions. Three, preparation, introspection about the decision, reaffirmation of the need and desire to change behavior, and completion of the final pre-action steps. Four, Action, implementation of the practices needed for successful behavior change. Five, maintenance, consolidation of the behaviors initiated during the action stage. Six, termination, former problem behaviors are no longer perceived as desirable. As Prushka describes in six steps, behavior change is not immediate and underscores that change is indeed a process, a series of stages or steps that lead to the desired future state. Keep these steps in mind as you set your QI goals and plan on how change will be implemented. Communicating with the process stakeholders is important to bring them through the series of steps, knowing that individuals each may be at a different stage. We'll see in the next slide that Prushka's six stages speak to where we as individuals and organizations are on a scale that looks at readiness to take on change. Let's take another view of our ability to adapt to change. Here are five categories that fit under the distribution model included in Everett Rogers' Diffusion of Innovations book. Think about where you might fit in, and do you feel you always fall into the same category, or does that shift depending upon what type of change you are contemplating or confronted with? 
Innovators are on the cutting edge of change, but account for only 2.5% of change adopters. Early adopters come in at 13.5%. The early majority and late majority account for 34% each and together make up roughly two-thirds of the distribution curve. Laggards, as Rogers described those that are last to adopt change, fall in at about 16%. Think not only about where you might categorize yourself, but where your QI team members fit and your organization as a whole. While the category you or your QI team and your organization fit in is not definitive, it does help you paint the landscape and understand readiness and enthusiasm for undertaking QI projects that will lead to change and how the changes we desire to implement from QI work will be accepted and viewed by you, your team, and your organization. This distribution model helps us once again think about the ocean we swim in or what is the culture of our organization when it comes to adapting to change. Thank you for taking time to learn about change management basics as part of the QI Basics course. Please join me for the next module in the course, Change Management, Models and Tools.